The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While they were all amazed at his every deed, Jesus said to his disciples, Pay attention to what I am telling you. The Son of Man is to be handed over to men. But they did not understood, understand this saying. Its meaning was hidden from them so that they should not understand it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. The Gospel of the Lord. Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 43 and 45. I, I think, you know, let's not forget that truly Jesus Christ is fully human and fully divine. And in being fully human, he shared in some of our human phenomenons. Today, uh, we, we get this sense of, uh, it doesn't say it, Scripture doesn't say it, but if, I, if we place ourselves in Christ Jesus, who is talking to his disciples and, and telling them, pay attention to what I'm about to say. The Son of Man, I am to be handed over to men. We have the advantage of having 2,000 years of Christian history and development, and we know what that means. That means that he's going to be handed over to the Pharisees, to the scribes, that are going to torture him, They're, you know, he's going to go carry the cross, crucify him, he's going to die, and the third day he's going to resurrect. But if you place yourself in the time when Jesus is saying this, and the apostles are listening to this, they're really hearing but not listening. Jesus is saying, I will be handed over to men. And then scripture says that they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was hidden from them so that they should not understand it. And they were afraid to ask him about the same. So this, I, I put myself in the, the shoes of Jesus Christ and, and boy, I, I could feel the frustration. You know, when, when you're trying to share something with someone that is as loaded as what Jesus Christ is saying here, I'm going to be handed over to men, and I'm going to be tortured, and I'm going to be crucified, and I'm going to die. They're going to kill me. Imagine you trying to express that to your friends, and they just don't get it. In psychology, they, they say that one of the ways, uh, the best way, and I, I could speak of my own personal experience, when you have strong emotions, the best way to, to, to cope and to deal with your emotions in a healthy way is to share them with someone else who will listen and validate your emotions. But how frustrating it is when you're sharing your emotions, trying to share from your own experience, and then the person in the other side is not able to understand. That makes matters worse, because now you have the emotions that you were dealing with before you share, and now on top of that you have the frustrations that the person is not listening to you. They don't get it. So here you could, you could really relate to uh, Jesus in the fullness of his humanity and this feeling of not being understood. My own friends don't get it. My own apostles are not getting it. Now, in our lives, uh, there, there could be many reasons why the other person may not be able to understand maybe hearing but not really listening uh, one is per perhaps you know they just don't have the time or don't care or the energy they're just uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, but not really engage uh, another one could be you know we go back to the principle of the tower of babel it, it, there is differences in language and culture and understanding and, and often you're speaking from one wavelength and someone else trying to understand it in another wavelength and, and just don't get it, They're not able to understand. Uh, it could be out of gender. Uh, often a man having difficulty to understand a, a woman, a woman having difficulty to understand a man. 
It could be of color or race. Uh, it could be because of accent. It could be because of social status. It could be because of a psychological condition. Maybe you suffer from a condition that people know about it and, and they don't take you seriously because, oh, that person has that issue. Don't really listen to them. Or let it be because of your past mistake, the cry wolf phenomenon. You cry wolf, wolf so many times. Now when something is really happening, they just won't believe you. But it could also just be because the other person is trying to defend themselves, a mechanism of defense. Maybe they're afraid. Maybe they're afraid of what will happen if they really listen and understand to what you're saying. And I think that's part of the case today in the Gospel. It says, uh, its meaning was hidden from them so that they should not understand it, and they were afraid to ask him about the same. Fear. Fear. Fear of really listening and understanding. What if I truly listen? What will happen? And what will it demand of me? In the case of the apostles, in this very concrete moment, for the apostles to hear and understand this, oh my God, that would be to enter into the process of grieving. My master is going to be killed. Too much to handle. I'll deal with it when it happens, if it happens. A fear. But perhaps having this analysis of this phenomenon, there's a greater reason why to ask the help of the Holy Spirit. You know, we have the story of the Tower of Babel and many of the reasons why often we cannot understand each other is that principle, you know, how God created different languages and, and the obstacles of culture, of the age, of gender, of, of so many things. But we know the antidote or the solution or how God responded to the principle of the Tower of Babel was Pentecost, the giving of His Spirit. And if you recall, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the gift of understanding. To apply that gift in our relationship with each other. That when someone comes to you and they're trying to get their emotions validated and just get their frustrations out, that you may hear, listen, understand. Ask the Spirit, Holy Spirit, give me the gift of understanding together with the gift of courage, because fear may creep in and I may just close myself from the other. Give me courage, give me understanding. This is a great act of charity, to listen and to understand each other, rather than do what often happens, and boy, the news are a perfect example of this. We're often fighting and yelling at each other, and no one is listening. No one is really understanding. May the gift of the Holy Spirit be renewed within us to have the courage to hear, to listen, to understand. And may we have the gift of understanding so that in doing so, we may do the great act of love, of just listening to each other and loving each other from where each person is at, in the here and in the now, and in doing so, to prove that truly the power of God is at work within us, the power of the Spirit, the great gift that Jesus Christ came to give us. So let us recall, Jesus Christ at the cross, about to die, and saying, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit, the Father who understands, the Father who revives, resurrects the Son by sending the Spirit. And Jesus Christ has to resurrect it from the dead, then giving us his own spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive this power. Receive this authority. We have it as Christians. May we use it for good, and may the Spirit be at work within us, that we may hear, listen, understand, and in doing so, doing so, do this great act of charity and love towards each other.